Hey, this is Dave DeVoe. Would you like to access private capital so that you can buy more properties and scale your real estate business? Then check out my brand new podcast. It's called The How to Raise Capital 101 Show. Now, the first nine episodes are a mini course on how to raise six figures in a matter of weeks and seven figures in a matter of months, even if you're starting from scratch. So you can find this new show. Again, it's called The How to Raise Capital 101 Show wherever you listen to podcasts. Or feel free to visit us at RaiseCapital101Show.com. Hey everybody, Dave DeBow here, another episode of the Property Profits Real Estate Podcast. And today you're in for a real treat. So let me ask you this. Have you ever wondered what is the best way or what are the best ways to expand your network, to expand your influence, to get in front of more new prospective investors, prospective sellers, other people in the industry. Well, if you've ever wondered that or you want to get going with that, then today's episode is going to be very valuable for you because our special guest is Adam Adams. And Adam is a very accomplished real estate investor in his own right. And more importantly, for our purposes, he's an amazing podcast expert. He he runs, he's had his own podcast, he has his own podcast, and he helps other people do really, really effective podcasts for themselves. So Adam, welcome to the show. Hey, I'm stoked to be here, Dave. Thank you for I'm, having me. I'm stoked to have you. We just finished a, an interview where I had a lot of fun chatting with you about podcasting in general and, and how I've used it for my business. Now we're going to turn things around. I'm going to interview you about uh, the, the effects of podcasting for you, and more importantly, for real estate investors that you've been working with. So we're going to be talking about what you call the three pillars of influence. And before we do that, can you just give us a quick little quick little background on your real estate investing journey? Yeah, it's it's funny. My my uh I was born on a polygamous colony a long, long time ago. And my mom left that and she met this guy. Jeff, he ended up becoming my stepdad and teaching me. He he's like a Robert Kiyosaki follower. And so from the time I was about five with him, he's, he keeps like pouring into me. I worked like for a buck an hour at his landscaping thing and in the hot sun, uh, child labor. And, um, he <laughs> always used to time. say, you've got to save like 10% for investing 10% pay yourself first 10% for this. And I'm like, well, if I'm getting a dollar an hour after I save these 10%, I can only buy a candy bar. Yeah. Um, but it was a big thing to him. My, my dad owns um, land in many places, rentals, multifamily, self-storage units, um, uh, rentals, whatever. And that was a thing where even when I was eight, I collected rent once when I was eight years old uh, because these these guys were in this duplex next door. So my real estate investing journey kind of happened when my mom married this guy. Uh -huh. And we started playing cash flow, I think the year that it came out. And my dad in 97, he told he's like, you've got to read this book uh, for uh, uh, what it was it called rich dad, poor dad, you've got to read this book. And then when the, the cash flow came out, we we started playing it. He bought me my first investment and then made me pay for it after Be, like he wanted to pay for it but his accountant said that he couldn't gift something that valuable to me so i had to buy it so that's my beginning of my journey is my dad wanted to help me my stepdad really wanted to help me but i i, I got this like christmas gift or birthday gift and then i had to pay for it anyway um, so that was my first investment. It was a piece of land. It was 2005 when I, when I bought that yeah. and it was a cabin lot and I had dreams of utilizing the cabin lot. My next investment was as soon as I sold that, I made like a 12,000% return on my money. I read, I finally, as a dyslexic person, I finally read Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Mm -hmm. at, my dad had been telling me to do that for like nine years before this. And so I finally read that book and I said, you know what? Awesome. I, uh, I am going to learn everything about Robert. So I went to one of his seminars and I learned that he didn't make his money with single family. That's what I, I learned from him. He made his money through business, but then invested it wisely with other people for passive investments, actual passive, passive 
multifamily. So I said, well, if Robert Kiyosaki is doing multifamily, I'm going to do multifamily. So I started managing other people's uh, real estate portfolios of multifamily, like an 18 unit, four unit, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And then I bought my first triplex and house hacked it in 2008. Nice. And um, when the downturn was happening, I did have a rough time with it because of the downturn. That was my first and foremost. And since then, we've uh, invested in over $100 million of real estate, uh, mostly syndication, mostly partnering with other general partners and uh, limited partners as a big team to do that. So um, that's what I've been doing for all of these other years. But in 2019, I slowed down on acquisitions. I, I didn't know what was happening with the market. Right. So I kind of slowed down on acquisitions and focused a little bit more on serving other podcasters, which is kind of where we are here. Very cool. So Adam, speaking of podcasting, how did you come across podcasting and what did you use it for as a, as a more active real estate investor back in the day? Awesome question. I, in 2016, I was pretty new to Denver mm -hmm. and I kept hearing that your network is your net worth. And I felt like I was in a bad position mm -hmm. since I didn't really have a network. Okay. I said, I'm not going to make any money if I don't have a network. So I thought to myself, how could I get a network? And the first thing that came to my mind was to be a little bit more um, active on social media to try to meet people online since I didn't feel comfortable meeting people in person. Mm -hmm. um, and the second thing was to go to other people's meetups. I was like, you know what? I'm just going to go to other people's meetups, put myself a little bit out of my comfort zone and connect with some people. Um, and that quickly turned into, man, I've got to be the person at the front of the room for a meetup. And you know what else? I've been listening to podcasts for the last like year, ever since I had moved to Denver at the time. I had been, I got my first iPhone and I've been listening to podcasts and I go, and I'm going to start a podcast. And I thought it was so brilliant. I thought if, if I was running the show at a meetup and I was running the show at a podcast, that my network would grow to a, a huge degree. And so that's what I decided 2016. I'm like, I'm doing, I'm doing these. So that's, that's kind of, these are two of the pillars, by the way, that we're going to be talking about today right. in the three pillars of influence. It is meetup and the podcast, and it worked really, really, really well for me. Whereas I've been able to speak on stages at real estate conferences of some of the biggest influencers in our country, in my country. You're in Canada, aren't you? I am in Canada. In but my I country. Of, I spent a lot US. of time in your country too. <laughs> uh, so, so I've just had that opportunity and it's, it's been wonderful. And it stemmed from putting myself out on a limb, even though I'm generally a little bit shy yeah. um, and, and a, timid and afraid to like kind of put myself out there. But I, I did it with the meetup in the podcast and my network grew and my income grew insane. Just every year, it basically doubled uh, every year for four years ever since then. Oh, that's amazing. So walk it. Well, let's, let's back up a little bit. Let's talk about these three pillars of influence. First of all, what are they? And, and then we'll kind of jump into each one and, and how they all connect. So my, my, the way that I look at us growing a business, a real estate por portfolio, raising private capital from our passive investors. Mm -hmm. The way that I look at these, any type of business really, is that exposure is, is a big part of it. And so there's these three pillars that, that I found that every single influencer that I've ever met, including you, Dave, has done all three of these. Every influencer. Uh, you look in in the, the U.S. at some of the people that are doing that that are putting on these conferences as well. They all do. They all do all three of these things. So I kind of drew this correlation between it, and then I tried it myself, and it, they started working. So what are the three things? These three pillars of influence. Think about it as a three legged stool. You, you're on a bar stool or whatever. Right. Um. You will fall over if you only got two of them. So just. Uh, let that sink in. You've got to do all three. 
for, for that stability. But one of them is meeting people in person. There is a lot of ways to accomplish this, and we can probably go into a little bit more detail, but meeting people in person is the first one. Okay. Your social that, that media. Was, that was the, the meetup group that you were, yeah. you were talking about earlier? Okay, very Yeah, good. well, that was how I accomplished mine. Yeah. Uh, you know, going to other people's events, hosting your own events, um, hey, having a storefront where people come to you, whatever it is, even a Zoom, uh, that face-to-face on Zoom, these mm-hmm. are all ways of meeting in person. Because when you have conversations with people, the when you see the, the facial expressions, the connection, the look in the eyes, the smiles, the teeth, the whites of the eyes, when you have that experience, y- you automatically grow a lot of trust for that person. Compared to just um, seeing them in other places or, or seeing their, their perfect you know, pictures on Instagram or whatever it is, Right. The the first pillar is meeting people in person. I accomplish that just by hosting my own meetup and then eventually conferences. Well, so let me ask you, if you don't mind, Adam, I'd like to dive into each one of these as we go through them. We'll do a quick little recap. So meeting people in person, you said that you're kind of shy by nature. You're not naturally an extrovert. I'm not either. A lot of people aren't. So what are your tips or suggestions for getting going there? And I know we all hear, you know, you just got to, you got to bust through, you got to overcome your, your fears and all that kind of stuff. But do you have any like practical tips that have worked really well for you as a shy person for doing this, getting started with it? I I, I want to point out two things that I think have helped me, yeah. uh, maybe even three, but one, the, one of the big ones is if I'm thinking about myself, when I'm on a stage or even right now on this podcast interview with you, which could be uncomfortable and awkward for for me or others to be interviewed and kind of like on the spot. Mm -hmm. When I have those times where I'm highlighted, the spotlight's on me and I start to feel uncomfortable, I start to wonder if I'm sitting the right way, if I'm wearing the right thing, should I be wearing this hat or not? You know, like um, whatever it is, it, it, or, or that I stutter sometimes, like I just did. When I start to think about me, it gets worse. When uh-huh. I start to think about like what I'm going through and how nervous I am, and that, then my palms are sweating, other places are sweating. I feel uncomfortable. I feel nervous. My hands clam up. And I do a worse job at being able to help other people. So the thing that I do intentionally every time is I forget about myself and I only think about the person on the other side. So I know that your listener, for example, Dave, is a real estate investor. It's somebody who's going to be raising capital. And I only think about that person. I'm not thinking about you, Dave. I'm not thinking about me. I'm thinking about your listener and what they need to hear. And something almost uh, miraculous happens when you make that shift and you focus on the, the service instead of yourself, you don't care that you stutter anymore. You don't care that, oh, if you're slouching or, or standing up and looking awkward or whatever it is, you just start to feel more natural and your words, your thoughts, your efforts are on serving that person. That's the first thing that that's really helped me the most. Smart. Um, the second thing is something I learned when I was in um, grade uh, middle school. Okay. I was in I was in band, and my teacher, Mr. Brimhall, um, he used to make us memorize quotes. One of the quotes was by Calvin Coolidge, and I've actually got it tattooed on my arm. Wow. Um, he talks. Calvin Coolidge talks about how nothing in this world can make you successful like persistence and determination. Uh, he talks about like, it, it's not how smart you are. It's not how um, talented you are. It's not whatever. It's not how educated you are. It's specifically that you don't quit. And so the second thing that I would like to pour into the listener is that which you persist in doing will become easier to do. You just got to keep focusing and it will eventually give you endless potential. So, so just keep doing it. Like it, I just keep doing it. That's the whole the whole point of your podcast. If you launch a podcast, your real estate investments, um, whatever it is, 
keep going, be determined. And then the last thing that I think that I had in mind a moment ago is um, you've got to understand that this will grow your business. And so for me, one of the thoughts is if I don't do this, will I achieve what I want? Mm -hmm. And I won't. I learned that I won't be able to get that if I'm not meeting people in person and these other two pillars, my business will fail. My real estate investing, I won't be able to raise the capital that I need if I don't do these three things. And so it's like, suck it up, buttercup. You've got, you've got to do the, the something that you hate or that you're afraid of or you're scared of. And then it's going to become easier to do. You're going to be okay with it. And uh, it will uh, make you money. It'll make you happier. It'll help you. All of these things, you, the, your, your, your vision, your goal, your dreams will come true by doing that hard thing for a little all while. Right. Yeah, no, that's fantastic. So you started off by, you, you were kind of new to town. You just moved to Denver. You found out about some other real estate investing meetups and you started going to those as yeah. a participant. And then he said, you clued in pretty quickly. Hey, this is good, but being the guy in front is better. Mm -hmm. So what kind of a meetup did you start and how did you, you know, just very quickly, how did you build that up and, and what impact did this, you know, meeting in person have on your business? Yeah. So I, I started doing some recon on all these other groups in part because I have children and my kids were both in grade school at the time. And now I've got, now one's in high school and the other one's in middle school. Um, they were in, in grade school. So I, I was having to cook breakfast for them, yeah. cook dinner for them, do, do bath time, you know, practically every day, um, homework. They were starting to do their homework. And so I had to focus on that. And so I didn't have the ability, really. I didn't feel like I had the ability, if I wanted to be a good dad, to go to the 6 p.m., uh, events, okay. the 5 p.m., 6 p.m., 7 p.m. events, because it just yeah. kind of took took that time from me. And so as I was doing the recon, one of the things that I said was, man, I just have a hard time doing this. I wonder if other people have a hard time. I was at the time a full-time real estate investor. Mm -hmm. So so I didn't have a job. I didn't have, I didn't work for anybody doing anything else. I just had my rentals. And um, so I said to myself, I want to meet with other people like me. That was my goal at the time. And so I thought, if I want to meet people that are serious in doing this, that are full-time in real estate, it's going to be easier for me to do that if I, um, if I meet in the middle of the day. So I just decided to do a, uh, a weekly meetup instead of a monthly meetup okay. uh, to, to, to be able to start to build those relationships a little so bit like faster. A, lunch, a lunchtime type meetup? Yep. Every Thursday at lunch. Exactly. Cool. All right. Yeah. So it's called it, the, was it real estate investing 101? What was it niche meeting? What what kind of a meeting was it? It was called Creative Real Estate Lunch Club. Okay. And creativity um, is a very broad yeah. thing for me. It wasn't only how do you um, how do you do a lease option or subject to. It wasn't only how do you do owner finance. It was anything that we can do outside the box to get a better result. So we talked a little bit. We had experts come each each week, and and some of them would teach on um, scope of work for a fix and flip. Some of them would teach on how to how to syndicate a deal, like which would mean to pool a lot of investors' money right. into it. Some of the people would talk a little bit about how to unlock your four hundred one k. So you've already got this four hundred one k. How do we make it a self directed four hundred one k, or so even good. a self directed yeah, so you, so IRA? Having... You're having the weekly meetings. You got a different guest coming every week. How big did the group go grow over time? Like at the, at the peak, how many people did you have showing up every Thursday for lunch? Yeah, I had at the peak 176 people wow. at lunch. That's yeah. mind boggling. Congratulations. Yeah. We were seeing 8,000 faces a year um, with the uh, four that translate meetings a week. Uh, into, how did that in translate into business for you and revenue for you? If you don't mind me asking that. Yeah. First and foremost, the very first meeting that I had during a giant snowstorm, um, I almost canceled it, but something, you know, I told you that I worked for my dad for a buck an hour. I, uh, once I, 
it was July in the middle of summer and, and I only did half of the job. I only did half of the tree watering and then I went home and he's like, you got done that fast. How'd you get done that fast? I was like, Oh, I'm good. I only want to make a dollar today. I don't want to make $2 or whatever it was. And, and he reamed me. He's like, if you start something, you got to finish it. And that's the persistence that we talked yeah. about. So here I was driving to this place during the snowstorm and just having all of these reasons to cancel, like, I would probably be saving myself. I, I pro, it might get worse when I leave here because it's still yeah. snowing. Um, I might be protecting other people. It would be it would be the right thing for me to just cancel this. All of these things are me being like, I don't know if I'm ready to be in front of the room, right? And right, this right, could right. be a real good excuse. So anyway, I showed up. So one of the things that I got from that is I actually have partnered in business with three of the people that were there. There was only, there was only six people there. <laughs> I've, that became yeah, I've partnered with in business, three of those people and made a bunch of money. I've sold wholesale deals. Yeah. Like I've, I've bought a fix and flip a, a guy that wasn't there on the very first meeting, but was there a couple months later, uh, kind of as it grew. Um, he had an off market fix and flip and he wanted to make sure he told the fewest amount of people possible. So this guy reaches out to me. Why? Not because I'm better, not because I have more experience, but because he definitely knew who I was because I was at the front of the room. Yeah. So this guy reaches out to me and he says, Hey, I've got a deal. And I want to see if you want it before I reach out to anybody else because you're at the front of the room. And we went ahead and, uh, and controlled the, this property. We didn't buy it. We controlled it. And we wholesale dealed this off to a, a different guy that was at that first meeting. He had, he had met me at the very first time. We had, we had known each other for a couple of months. We had gotten to know each other. And so I made $5,000, which is not a lot, but I made five grand. I didn't ever own anything. I didn't ever look for a property yep. and I didn't ever look for a buyer. They were just already in my network. Well, you lived so, up to, you lived up to the name of your group too. That was creative. So that's, that's <laughs> fantastic. Wow. That's another fantastic idea. Hold on to that thought for a sec. We'll be right back. Now, are you a real estate investor who's run out of cash or credit to grow your portfolio? Are you looking to grow your portfolio using other people's money and raising capital? Well, I want to show you how to raise six figures or more in six weeks or less at my upcoming Investor Attraction Workshop. You can get your ticket and find out all about it at InvestorAttractionWorkshop.com. We're going to spend a full day taking a deep dive into this roadmap that I've used to raise millions for my deals. And I've helped other people just like you cumulatively raise hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars for their deals as well. So again, you can check that out at InvestorAttractionWorkshop.com. And as a loyal listener to the podcast, you'll get 50% off your ticket when you use the discount code podcast. That's right. Discount code podcast at investorattractionworkshop.com. See you at the next workshop. Adam, so we're, we're running low on time here, my friend, and I don't want to miss the other two pillars. Okay. So we've talked about meeting with people in person. What's the next pillar that we got to take a look at? I, I put in social media as a pillar. I know a lot of people are afraid to even have social media. If, if they're like you or me, or even more introverted than you or me, more engineering brain that, than even you and I might be, they might be like, oh, I don't want to, I'm against social media. There's no, I don't want to put myself out there. I don't want to have a fake thing. I, I, they, they just have so many things about posing not in front being, of Lambos with bikini clad yeah, and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. I don't mind the bikinis, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's keep going. Um, so the social media, um, I think that there's a lot of people that are afraid to even have a social media or they just don't want to put themselves out there or uh, they don't want people to see them or find them. Right. But what I've noticed when you want to have real influence and that we're calling these the three pillars of influence, three-legged stool, you need all three. If that's what you're looking for, you have to realize and understand that most people, when they're going to vet you, they're going to Google you. They're going to look for your Facebook. They're going to look for your LinkedIn. They're going to, they're going to look for you online. They're going to see what types of pictures you post. Is, as they get to know who you are, as they get to see that stuff, see you with your sweetheart, see you doing your, your, um, uh, your hobbies, 
-hmm. They get to know you and it allows them to trust you more because they find your social. And I find that a lot of people um, don't even want to have a social. And so they're not really searchable. And because they aren't searchable, uh, it's really hard for people to trust them or do business with them, especially nowadays, now that we're in the 2022s, 2023s, um, people, that's how people vet people. Um, so on social media, uh, a quick, uh, tip that I would have is you can do something that, um, Gary Vaynerchuk shares. It's called jab, jab, right hook. And it, when he wrote the book, jab, jab, right hook, he actually wanted to have a lot more jabs in the name. The point that I'm making is on social media, the jabs are things, if it's, if it's uh, Facebook, for example, the jabs are your health, your travels, the food that you might be eating, um, your hobbies, your kids, your sweetheart, uh, whatever. It's the things about you. The right hooks, if you're raising capital, for example, as a real estate investor, the right hooks could be that you mention a deal that you've got. You mention uh, uh, some returns that you're getting. You mention a a friend of yours who just invested with you and didn't know that he could do that. You Mm -hmm. mention uh, mention that you're looking for apartment syndications. You're looking for these types of deals if anybody can find them. So you've got a lot of jabs and then you've every now and again, you've got that right hook. Um, We can go into, we could go into tons of detail on how to make social media the most effective, but I don't know if we'll have time the thing that I will share is that my meetup ended up growing to number six in the world out of 225,000 meetups. My meetup ended up growing so much that Meetup HQ flew me out to, um, to Manhattan and I spoke with the engineers at the sixth floor at Meetup wow. HQ and asked them, why am I one of the speakers? What did I do? And they started talking to me about some of the successes of our meetup group. And I could point most of the reasons for those success that I did the jab, jab, right hook on inviting people on social media every now and again to my meetup group, Uh taking pictures of the meetup group. If you missed it and you, you take a picture of 176 people at lunch, if you missed it, this is what happened today. Nice. And that built the meetup, that built the credibility, the accountability, the the social proofing. With if I tried to have a meetup without anything on social media, I would have been just like all these other meetups and barely getting any success. That's fantastic, Adam. So we're talking about meeting with people in person. You got that going through the meetup, you blew that sucker up in conjunction with the social media. So are you more of a a Facebook guy or an Instagram guy, or do you try and do all things social media? I want to suggest to your listener that they focus on one. Yeah. And I focused on Facebook. It, It does not mean that they should focus on Facebook. They might need to focus on TikTok or Instagram or LinkedIn depending on who is their exact avatar and which one fits their personality the most. I am, I I don't think I'm introverted. Like we use the word introverted. I don't think I'm introverted. I think I'm extroverted, but I'm shy. I, I'm afraid to put myself out there. I'm afraid to be the first one to talk. I go into a crowd. I'm going to listen to everybody instead of be, be like boisterous. Right. Um, I can relate. I'm kind of that way myself. Yeah. <laughs> but I actually like connecting with people. I, I love it. So um, with that said, the I, I think okay, meetup. Let's just let's just pass through. I, I want to pass through. The meetup, you got to meet with people in person somehow. Yeah. Have have a storefront, go to other people's events, whatever. You have to do that. It takes the no like trust much, much faster. Okay. Social media. Especially if you're the leader of the group. Yeah, especially. Yeah. Social media, it takes the no like trust because some people just get blocked. If some people just stop 
even thinking about you if they can't find that stuff on you. Uh, me, I'm the, I'm this friendly person. So I've choo I've chosen Facebook because it's, it's chill, uh, to me, uh, Instagram was too perfect. I was never perfect. The pictures were perfect. Uh, I, that was never me. I, I don't claim to be perfect. I don't claim to be the most handsome guy. Uh, you're, you're pretty, my, I'm good looking. I, I, must say. <laughs> I appreciate that. The LinkedIn, I, I like business, but I don't claim to like want to always be businessy. I'm more right. friendly, more family. And so more, I, more I informal, right? More informal. Yeah, informal. Yeah. yeah. But your listener might be more formal. And so don't don't just go, don't listen to this thinking, I've got to do Facebook because Adam did Facebook. You will get success on TikTok or Facebook or Instagram or LinkedIn or bigger pockets or wherever you go that's a social media platform that you can have these organic conversations but you got to you got to probably have the profiles and maybe just focus on one uh, then the third pillar if we can jump yeah, in for sure yeah that's is, is the big thought one. leadership this is the one that i think is i mean they're all most important uh, people i've spoken on stage about the three pillars many times yeah. uh, at different real estate conferences and people ask me this question. This is this has come up three times at three different conferences. Adam, um, if you had to only do one of these, or if you had to only do two of these, which would it be? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, did you not hear my freaking? <laughs> the, I just the told you. Analogy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so so they're all the most important. They are all critical. You can't have the success that you dream of without having a little bit of all three of these. The third one is thought leadership. So Dave, I know you write some books with your clients. Like when you have clients that are wanting to raise more capital, you'll help them with a thought leadership platform of a book right? where they can get their story out. That counts. You know what else counts? A YouTube channel. You know what else counts? Your own meetup group could double as the thought leadership platform and- definitely. Um, you could also host conferences. You could also have a podcast. This, my company grow your show is a podcast agency. We serve podcasters. Um, but your, your listener doesn't necessarily need a podcast. They need to figure out which of those platforms is best for them. Mm. I yet haven't yet published a book, but I've been trying to publish a book for at least four years. Because it's not my natural way to go. Right. Having a conversation on a podcast is very comfortable for me. So you, if you're listening and you're thinking, I've got to do some type of thought leadership, figure out at least one of them. You can do more down the line, but get like um, what's Gary uh, Keller? Is uh -huh. that, yeah, Keller yeah the one thing, the yeah. book he wrote, the one thing. Um, and it, it, the big takeaway is Gary is doing a lot. His business serves a lot, but each time he decides to make a decision, he focuses on a thing that is going to make his business move forward first. And mm -hmm. so your listeners thinking, Oh, I'll, to me, I'm a writer. I've always wanted to write a book. I could probably write a book about my niche in real estate, how I do it, how we make money, and how we how we work with other people that want it to be more passive, right? And so they could write a book on that, or they could do a YouTube, or they could do any of the other things we talked, or they could do what my company serves them with and start a podcast. You've got to have a thought leadership platform. And we mentioned the reasons for the meetup is to, am, to, um, to make it faster the no like trust. The social media is to even let the no like trust even happen because mm -hmm. people will search for you. The thought leadership, it amplifies the top of the funnel. It's the no. It's the awareness part of the funnel. So you're looking at the no, and then in the middle, it's like, and at the bottom, in the very skinny part, it's the trust. The most amount of people need to be aware of you. If you don't have all three of these, then you're, it's going to be really hard for you to grow your business. 
And like we mentioned a little bit earlier, everybody that I have seen that are excelling at, in business, they do all three of these in some way. Right. So the so you want people to talk about you when you're not in the room. If you've got a book and somebody finishes reading it and it was a good book, they're going to talk about you behind your back in a good way. They're right. going to say to their friend, hey, I've got this book. Uh, do you want to borrow it? I learned this and this. They're going to hand it to their wife. Their wife's going to tell their coworker. It's going to grow the influence with these people th because of the top of the funnel, the awareness part of the funnel. Oh, another thing I love about most thought leadership platforms like YouTube or podcast or, or a book is you can do the thing one time. You, you Like you record this episode today. Right. After that, probably hundreds or thousands of people are going to listen to it in, a, in, yep. in, in the next couple of days. But then five, 10 years from now, this content is still working. It's still evergreen. It's still valuable. The, every everything that we discussed on this episode it will still help uh, a, somebody who wants to be a better real estate investor 10 years from today. And But we only spent 30 minutes doing it once. Okay. So yeah, no, it's, it's a thing of beauty. And then the other thing I would add to the whole the platform thing is it, because all of this can be overwhelming. You're going, you know, especially if somebody's going, well, geez, I, I don't have a meetup. I barely even go to real estate investment club meetings. I, I don't like posting on social media. There's no way in heck I'm going to write a book or, or start a podcast or this kind of stuff. So first things first, like Adam said so clearly, you got to get out of your own way. I mean, you got to, your, your why has got to be bigger than whatever it is that your fears are, right? So you got to, you got to take some action. You got to do, but you don't need to be perfect at everything right out of the gate. I, I think that's biting off more than you can chew. So for the meetings, if you're not comfortable hosting your own meetup just yet, well, go attend some meetups, go, you know, just be part of them. And then maybe volunteer to be one of the people that, that introduces people at the meetup. So you don't even have to be the main guy, but just being by on, by being on stage, introducing somebody that gets you, gets you going a little bit further in that direction. So get out there and, and do something like that. Uh, the social media, you know, I kind of suck at social media. So this has been great for me, Adam. I mean, I, I've been way too many, not enough jabs and too many trying to do right hooks. So good reminder about the jabs and getting the personality out there. Cause, cause my whole thing on it's terrible. I kind of think it's not, it's, it's not anybody's freaking business. What I had for lunch. I don't want to share that. I, I don't <laughs> want to have the family pictures up there and all that kind of stuff, but you've given me some food for thought there. So again, you know, share what you're comfortable with, but, but more jabs out there with the, with the social media. Cause you're right. People are going to Google you. They're going to see whatever shows up and it can't be all glitzy and just salesy. They need to see the real you to help build up that, that no like and trust factor. And then the, uh, the platform again, like you say, I love that because you're obviously a podcast guy. That's, that's your main business these days, but you're not saying that's the only thing or that's the best thing for everybody, but something, whether that's your own YouTube channel or your own, uh, book, or perhaps even something as simple as a, a regular newsletter that you're sending out for somebody or whatever it is, you've got, you've got something that's going out and it's, it's creating a platform. Like you said, the meetup group in a certain way is a platform, but one recommendation I would have, especially around the platform is don't try to do it all yourself, right? Don't try to do it all yourself. Uh, get help. The reason I've been able to do my podcast for four years now and 300 and some episodes or whatever it is, is because I got a team and it allows me to focus on what I'm best at, right? So get the help you need. There's an amazing book out there, uh, Who Not How. I'm sure you're, you've heard yeah, of that Yeah, I one, love right? that book. Yeah. That's a fantastic book, my friend. Yeah, I'm part of uh, Strategic Coach right now. So big Dan Sullivan fan. Um, that's, and the, and the name says it all, Who Not How. So instead of figuring out how to do everything yourself, figure out who already knows how to do that get them to help you out, right? So that you can really just hit the ground running. Uh, Adam, this has been a lot of fun. If people want to find out more about you, uh, your podcast, your podcast services, all that kind of good stuff, besides Googling you, where can they go? <laughs> yeah, if they want to just check out the podcast for free, wherever they're listening to this one, 
it, they can just go to listen to podcast on podcasting. So, um, and the, the website's growyourshow.com if they do want help with a podcast. That's fantastic. We'll have that in the show notes as well. Adam, it's been a real pleasure. Time flies when we're having fun. Thank you so much for sharing your three pillars of influence. Thank you so much for taking a deep dive into how this has worked for you as a real estate investor, how this helped, you know, having this dialed in really helped you double your income. I think you said four years in a row. Four years in a row. Yeah. And yeah. we're talking about going, you used to be making a buck an hour with your. your yeah. Your so stuff. now I'm making eight bucks. <laughs> Boom. Every hour. <laughs> I think it's a little bit more than that. But anyhow, it, it shows what a high impact that can have. So Adam, it's been a real pleasure. Uh, I look forward to staying in touch with you. Thank you so much. Right back at you. All right, everybody, take care. We'll see you on the next episode. Well, hey there. Thanks for tuning into the Property Profits Podcast. If you like this episode, that's great. Please go ahead and subscribe on iTunes. Give us a good review. That'd be awesome. I appreciate that. And if you're looking to attract investors and raise capital for your deals, then I'm going to invite you to get a complimentary copy of my newest book, right back there. There it is. The Money Partner Formula. You can get a PDF version at InvestorAttractionBook.com. Again, InvestorAttractionBook.com. Take care.